Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the archives. I'm Tyler Apple. And I'm Rudy Luttrell. And we are the, the Mystic, Mystic Mentors. Mentors. Today, we're going to be talking about something that is important, but not necessarily... Uh, th th there's not a lot of videos talking about this. We're going to be talking about a checklist or, you know, the process of preparing for a tournament and then actually traveling to the tournament without interjecting about the cardboard. Would you say that a lot of these, a uh, lot of pieces of the checklist are mandatory, Rudy? I would say almost all of them are mandatory, at least in my experience. Okay. Excellent. So why don't you uh, take us into it? What, what okay. do we need to bring? What should so, go into my bag? The first thing that I tell everyone, or at least uh, when we get together as a group, I have many times in the past texted the group chat and said, hey, here are, is a list of items that you should bring because I have gone to countless tournaments and forgotten one of these things. Right. And some of the most important things that you can bring to any tournament are, let's start with the most important, arguably the most important things. Yes. The first of which, your deck. Yes, bring your deck. I don't feel like many people would forget that, but I always put it on the list just in case. I mean, we know at least one guy whose last name is Sample, who <laughs> came to a full RCQ oh, boy, without yeah. a deck. <laughs> He did, in fact, come without a deck. He came with some cards for the deck. The second thing is a deck list. A lot of tournaments that we go to are competitive uh, in nature and thus yes. need a deck list. It's always better to bring a finished list to the tournament with you. Yes. Uh, that way, if you're if you're brainstorming or whatever, you can make a quick change to it on the road. Yeah. Uh, instead of scrambling to finish it out right when you get to the tournament. I just feel like too many people do that and... Um, it, it, <laughs> It's too much stress already to go to a high stakes tournament. Filling out a deck list like five minutes before you're supposed to sit down and play. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. You should be spending that like half an hour you have before the tournament starts. Socializing, relaxing, mm -hmm. like bring your ch yourself down to a nice even keel. Yep. So that you can think clearly in the opening rounds. Because when you're rushing, that rush is going to follow you yeah. throughout the, the tournament. You're going to be off balance yep. the whole time. Absolutely agree. The third thing I like people to bring, or that I encourage they, they bring, yeah. are any of your accessories. Which is going to be like your deck boxes, your play mats, uh, things like that, uh, life pad and a pen. I feel like those are very important. I get to have a pen? Yeah, you get to have a pen. Uh -huh. Not for videos. Oh. Only for play. All right. Another thing I will inform players to bring, or at least encourage them to bring, is extra sleeves. Yes. Oh. During a tournament, it is rare but it does happen that you tear a sleeve yes or it gets deemed or something and you don't want to get called out for marking your cards yeah uh, and you you want to be able to shuffle your deck comfortably that that is the last thing you want to be worrying about in a high stakes tournament is yes. like sleeves ripping so now you have to resleeve the entire deck right bring a few extra sleeves if the fourth thing is sleeves then the fifth thing has got to be snacks and a water bottle Snacks in a water bottle? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, what, kind of, what kind of snacks? I'll yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go deeper. So, a tournament can last hours. That's true. Hours. Yes. And a lot of times, you're not going to have the available time to go and get something to eat. Yeah. And if you are buying drinks, a lot of times it's expensive, and this is for you frugal spenders. Bring your own stuff, like bring a snack, bring a drink, and I guarantee you your performance throughout the day will be better. It's true, but I mean, water can't be that important, can it, Rudy? I mean, like, <laughs> Listen, you know, water is definitely not you need to You need to hydrate, my man. Uh, I'm not convinced. Hashtag not sponsored. So, Rudy, when we're getting ready to go, right, let's say right. we're not even on the road yet, we haven't even gotten to the tournament, we're just right. planning out the framework. Mm -hmm. What do we need to have on our checklist before we even leave before you fill the bag yes all right <clears throat> and this one uh controversial as it may be which i don't think is that controversial hygiene so let's be entirely honest you're going to a public space there will be other people other than you and it is important to be conscious of how you may end up affecting the people around you right it's just not it's not just us and our musk got it yeah it's not just us and our musk got it and Pulling from that point into um, how we need to be aware of others, uh, what kind of attitude should we be entering the tournament with? And that's another thing. It's important to be hygienic, and just as important, it's important to have a good attitude. Yeah. 
because we've seen it. There have yeah. been people that go to these tournaments and they are just angry from the get. Oh yeah, and it doesn't happen not, very often, like that yeah, we've experienced. Not, but there's definitely mm-hmm. a bit of a an edge on some folks when you sit down with them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we're fortunate enough that our players around here are so kind and so welcoming, and a lot of them don't yeah. struggle with those issues. But we know it exists out there, okay. and so it's important for us to, you know, uh, I feel like it's our duty to, if we want to encourage this community to grow and to be better, mm. that we talk about attitude because it's such an important part of not only the game and the social aspect, but it's an important part of just being a decent human being. And when you bring that positive attitude down into the table as well, like I've played against those players, if you're not letting their attitude affect you, not only are you gonna play a better game, it might even bring their attitude up. Like yeah. I'm usually messing with people and hopefully what they view as a as a wholesome way, but I'm usually trying to make the game fun, lighthearted, mm. and make it you know what it's supposed to be which is you're playing a card game this is not life and death even if there's thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars yep. online at the end of the day there's only going to be one winner which means the rest of us had better make this a positive experience <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because there can only be one winner and treating it like a cutthroat job or you know yeah, ex- yeah absolutely make it a cutthroat experience is not going to help it's not going to help you and it's not going to help the person across from you so be the better person if the other person's had a rough day a rough night whatever's driving that edge that they have on them help them smooth it out a little bit you know make it into a smoother day for them and believe it or not it'll be smoother for yourself and you'll both have a good time at the worst yeah another really important thing that i do before we even fill our bag is i personally treat going to these tournaments like a sport yep I like to get a good meal before I go, uh, before I go to bed, and then get eight hours of sleep. Yep. I think I perform my best personally when I have, when I'm not hungry, I'm not thirsty, I'm not tired, and I feel like that'll be a common result for a lot of you. Try it, trust me, it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just the importance of uh, all of those three things combined will also increase your hygiene, it'll also increase your attitude, Mm -hmm. like just healthy practices in general. Yeah. I would actually, this isn't for everyone I understand, but for myself, I love exercising like before anything major. So any sort of major event or any sort of like anything that could be potentially stressful. I like exercising before that. And I'm not talking about, you know, you go to the gym and you, you know, work your body out for an hour. I'm talking like, you know, going for a jog. If you're someone who enjoys jogging, going, you just get those endorphins going yeah. in some way. Yeah. So for me, I like to lift weights at home. And so I'll lift weights, just do some aerobics, maybe go for a 10 minute jog. I remember at the two seater where you actually qualified, Yeah. you did go downstairs and you worked out before everyone else got up and we went out for breakfast. Yeah. And it wasn't just because I was low, short on sleep and high on stress and <laughs> trying to figure out a deck. It before. helps relieve that stuff too, though. Yes, it does. Yeah. I mean, I felt like it helped my attitude the entire day. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. So with that being said, just make sure that you guys are doing your checklist before you take off to big tournaments, especially if you're going far. Here in the Midwest, we drive sometimes upwards of eight hours to make it to a tournament. We end up staying overnight, uh, and there's a lot of stress and stuff that comes with that. Just make sure that you're doing this checklist. Make sure that you guys are happy, healthy, with a good attitude, and you're ready to compete at the highest level that you possibly can. Thank you so much for joining us. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll catch you in the next one.